17 years old, you were came here to the United States and cried, physically cried, because you had your own bedroom. What are some things now, looking back, that that girl at 17 could not believe that they accomplished? So many. First of all, I didn't think I would get a degree in the United States, which I did. I graduated summa cum laude, so that's great. I didn't think that I would come back to the States and have my own house just two years after coming here to the States. I now have two cars. Uh, my ki I can send my kids to private school. I have a business that's generating about $600,000 per year and growing. I am surrounded by millionaires, they are my mentors, my friends, a good network. All of these things, they would not have, my 17 year old would have never understood that it's possible. I moved to the States in 2018. Uh, it was me, my husband and our daughter who was one year old at the time. And uh, I've been to the States before, you know, I went to college here, I went to school here, and it was a different way, different, totally different when there's a system taking care of you, like I knew where I was going to stay, I knew what I was going to do. But when we moved here, uh, we moved because we won the green card lottery, we had to leave everything behind and take a risk and just start life again here from scratch. And we didn't have pretty much anything. We didn't have a job, a house, a car, you know, um, like no stability, we didn't know what we're going to do or what the future is going to look like. And then we find out that we can't access our funds from home. We didn't have a lot, but it was still something to get us started. And uh, we only had $400 in our pocket to rely on. So it was an insane start here in the United States. That was the most stressful period in my entire life. And uh, my husband and I, we said to each other, you know, we're going to give ourselves one year to make it work here in the States. If we're not happy, we're going back home. Like, we know what we can have at home, we can, we're going to go back home. So, um, here we are, five years later, we're still uh, going strong and we love it here. Okay, so you moved to the States, where'd you move to, what'd you start doing, tell me that story. Okay, so we come to the States and um, I made it my goal to find a job. Um, my husband speaks English very well too, but he was a little... Uh, maybe shy to speak English. So I was like, I don't know if my English is good enough to find a job here. So um, I was like, okay, I'll find one. So I started applying to three jobs every day. That was my goal. No matter what, I'm going to apply to three jobs. And when I say three jobs, it's not just randomly sending my resume. It's actually crafting it and reading the application and knowing whether or not I'd be a good fit. And I had this situation when um, I was actually selected to work for a bank, but we didn't have a car, so that didn't work out. And then I, I got, I actually got a job, which turned out to be a scam. So I was like, I don't care how much I want the money, I need the money, I'm not going to do that kind of job. A, a scam, like what do you mean? It was um, uh, selling, what was that? Like, or different plans, different offers. It sounded like an MLM, you know, like different levels, and they, oh, they promised so, so much money, but you, and I, I was like, I, I don't know, that doesn't sound legit, so... Um, even though we really needed money, I, I want, I was like, that's not something I would do. That's not my core value, you know, that's not, I can't do that. So then, um, and I remember when I applied to a real estate job, Blackjack Real Estate, I had that tab open for weeks probably, and I, I wouldn't dare apply because I didn't have any experience in real estate. I was like, who's going to take me? I have no experience in real estate. That's just going to be a waste of my time. And then at some point, I was running out of things to apply, and I wanted to give the promise to myself. I said, hey, I have jobs to apply today. I'm going to apply to this real estate. And to my surprise, I got a phone call back. I spoke with the COO of the company, and that was it. After that conversation, I went to my husband and said, that's it. I don't want to work for anyone else. I want to be with this company. I really don't think that your resume of experience is really going to tell me whether you'll do a good job in, in my company or any company, frankly. Well, how do you feel about that? You're hiring a ton of people now, so how do you feel about that, that structure? Absolutely. So, um, I, I agree. And then when I was promoted with your company, I actually had to hire my own team, someone to help me. So I got a lot of, I got a very good understanding of what I'm looking for in those people. And you're right, personality always beats any skill set because everything can be uh, learned. So now, yes, now I have a hiring company. We hire virtual assistants from, mostly from overseas. Some people want to hire local, which, you know, we, we do as well. But um, we mostly hire virtual assistants from overseas. And that, I, I apply the same principles that I learned during, in your company. Like, it's so important to have a good, good team because the right team will always take you to the next level. It's better to have an average product in the hands of a great team rather than a great product in the hands of an average team.
Yeah, I uh, agree so, with that. So, uh, and you're looking at personality, core values fit. Of course, skill set is also good, but uh, and the way people interact with each other. So, um, I learned a lot working working uh, with blackjack real estate, definitely. Okay, so you just jumped from the fact that you worked for me, yeah. and then now you have your own company. So, what happened in, in, on, along the way? Like, you just quit? You left me and my company? Oh. And, like, how did that go? The reason I, I, I left was probably because I, I felt like, I felt a calling inside. And, I, and best things in my life always came from taking risks. So, I mean, even coming here to the States was taking a risk. Even applying to a green card was taking a risk, leaving everything behind. And so I think I... I, I um, I got to a point where I said, what's next from here? I feel pretty comfortable in my role as lead intake. And I know when I feel comfortable, I, 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 that's not a good place for me to be in. So I said, look, I came here. I'm, I'm in the United States. I am in the land of opportunities. Um, and I can't stay in the same position. I have to spread my wings. I have to do more. So that was my mindset. It was probably a calling inside. And even though I really liked my job, I liked the company, I liked the team, um, I knew that it was time for me to, I knew that I would regret if I, if I didn't do something that, that was uh, more riskier and, and that felt bigger to me. So I started my own company. Um, it was... Um, it was pretty scary. Um, we didn't have a lot of clients at the beginning. Still, we were still building trust. I still made. I, I mean, looking back now, I understand what I would have done differently back then. But um, I'm, I'm really happy that I took this step because I grew as a person a lot. Uh, I grew as a professional, but also personally, I am not the same person that I was even last year. Um, and I don't think I would have been if I hadn't taken this step. So being an entrepreneur has really changed me in that regard. You know? yeah, and so. from my, my side, from the employer side, you were telling us all along the way, like, I want to do more, I want to grow, I want all this stuff. and. We tried to expand the company and the the uh, like your responsibility and things enough, but sometimes like people are just gonna sometimes you're gonna outgrow the people and sometimes the people are gonna outgrow you, and that's totally okay. Like I think when I look back, I feel like the best uh, proof of a good leader, a good person, a good company is the people that used to work with them are still close to them. I see a lot of people like when they say, oh, I want to leave or I want to go build my own business. They're like, oh, good luck. Like, I'm going to shut you down or I'm going to cut you off or you have this non-compete that you can't do that. And that's just, that's insecurity, I feel like, more than anything. There's like way more opportunity out there for, for everyone than, than is, we can even grasp. And so I was really excited for you. Obviously, it was a big blow to the company. It was kind of sad, but I was excited for you and... Uh, and to support you any way that I can. And I think the people that are listening, if you have teammates and employees, like you should be growing and raising your team and your people to be bigger than you one day. And what that does is it pushes you to continue to build an umbrella and a company that's, that's wide enough and big enough and scale, scale up enough for them to, to see themselves fit under there. The second they don't see themselves fitting under what you're doing, they're going to go find another spot to grow. Because growth and contribution is really important for people. Like, I know one of your values is growth. And so if you can't see yourself growing inside of our company, why would you stay? And why would I want you to stay, you know? So I think that's really important as, as you build a company or even if you're an employee somewhere. Like, if they're holding you down, and then, you know, you might need to spread your wings and fly, and that's okay. Absolutely, yeah. Nothing wrong with being an employee. I know plenty of people who are happy to clock in 9 to 5. So if that's what makes you happy, then you know, like for example, my sister, she said, I would never be an entrepreneur. I, I like to binge watch Netflix on the weekends. I like to have my, my evenings off. Being an entrepreneur, meaning you work, 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 your mind is always occupied thinking of the next thing. But, um, but I love it. This is, this is closer to who I am as a person. So, yeah, absolutely. Not, doesn't mean that the A players in your company will leave, but if they, but if they have this desire, nothing will stop them. So let's talk about that for a second. How do you relax as an entrepreneur? What do you do for fun? <laughs> Here's the thing. I like to work, <laughs> right? To me, this is fun in a way. I know it sounds bad, but I force myself to do something on the weekends. Um, and if I don't have an activity, I, I, I don't really enjoy it. But 
Uh, what I really like is I like thinking uh, about the future. I like casting visions and thinking. But this is fun to me, and I'm very lucky to have a spouse that is the same way. And um, I, I say like we don't need date nights necessarily because we connect very well talking about our business and the future and things. It just works for us. But to but we have also have two daughters, and I understand that they don't see things the same way. They need our attention, and so for fun. You know, we just try to be as present as we can. Uh, we actually involve them in a lot of business decisions. We take them to events. Even now, we're flying to an event. Our daughters are in the back of this plane. And um, I mean, the oldest one, who's seven years old, she, she already understands a lot of terms. And uh, it's, uh, it's really cool. And I remember growing up, um, my dad always told me, study English, you know, like focus on English, that's going to open doors for you. I remember one time I came from school and I had a bad grade in history and I started crying because I'm so like, you know, I have to have good grades and uh, all that. Um, so I started crying and he's like, what, what happened? I was like, I got this bad grade in history. And he's like, what do you have in English? I'm like, oh, English, you know, I got the highest grade. He's like, focus on that. Focus on what's working. Focus. You got to be intentional about what you want in the future. Um, the fact that you got a bad grade in history history, is that really going to matter in five years from now? Probably not. But if you focus on English, studying a foreign language, this is your ticket out of this country. This is your way of getting a better opportunities. So I really took his advice to my, to, you know, to heart, and I actually implement this advice a lot, even in business. Um, if something will not matter in five years, then, you know, I, I, it doesn't, doesn't matter that much, but focus on what's working. So because I followed his advice, I am um, I um, left my country first time at 16, and I actually came to the U.S. I was an exchange student, and I lived with a host family. And, and my host family told me that when I first, when I got to their house, they told me, this is your room. And I started crying because I was going to have my own room. Like, that never happened at my home. We, I was sharing a small room with, uh, we were four siblings, so we're all sharing, sharing that little tiny room. So uh, I started crying because I'm going to have my own space, and just... This is the time when I realized how drastic, how different life is here and versus how I grew up, even though I didn't know anything better. Um, and um, that's probably what motivated me even more. It's like, I, I want a better life. I, I want more. Um, I, I don't want to be stuck in... in, in with small opportunities. So uh, this is how, this is what I can tell about Moldova. You know, it's, it's, it's better now. I mean, economically, it's, um, it's, you know, it's okay. There are opportunities, not as many as here in the States, but you can have a decent life. Uh, but when we came here, it's, it's still, this is still the land of opportunities. There's still a lot you can do here that you can do a lot of other places. What did your parents do in Moldova and what, what is like income like there and, and things yeah. like that? So typical income per month, uh, let's see, when I had my first job right out of college, I went there, but with knowing English and with education, I got about $600 a month. That was, uh, that was about 2010, 2011, something like that. Uh, I would say probably now with good English, you could get about, uh, I mean, if you get probably $2,000 a month, that's a very good salary. So twenty-four thousand dollars a year. Yes, that, that's like probably really, really good. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to buy a house there, how much does it cost? Um, we built our house. I'm not sure about the cost, but I can tell you, rent, for example, you can rent an apartment for about two hundred dollars a month. Two hundred dollars a month. That's actually something that I used to compare because you know I hire virtual assistants and people sometimes say, how can I pay someone five dollars an hour? And I say, I would have worked for five dollars an hour when I was back home. Because, you know, I, I, I look at the numbers, so I, I know that I could cover my rent, I could cover my food, and I could put some money aside. So it's not the same. Don't look at uh, the whole world through the lens of the U.S. Because you you will not find a good apartment here renting for 200 a month. Oh. So, you know. Maybe a couch <laughs> in a garage. That, that's right. <laughs> so. Um, What's a typical job there? Like, what did, what did the majority of people in Moldova do for work? Like, uh, yeah. Or the, maybe the top couple jobs. Uh, it's a it's an agricultural country. So outside of the capital, you will see a lot of farms. Uh, my actually both my parent, both my grandparents, uh, both sides of my grandparents are farmers. So um, 
That's typically what you see. Actually, the sad reality is that the majority of the people, they leave the country. Looking for better opportunity elsewhere. Looking for better opportunities, absolutely. And so it's, it's um, you you will see in any family or most families, they have someone who, who lives abroad. Absolutely. So if it's women, for example, especially our parents' generation, like let's say my mom, my, my mom didn't do this, but um, uh, my mom's generation women, they usually go to Italy and work, uh, take care of uh, elderly people or cleaning. Uh, for men, uh, they usually work in constructions in Russia. So that's, um, that's a um, popular thing to do as well. So there are not a lot of opportunities for employment in, in our country. And if there are, they're not as well paid as they are in Europe or even Russia. So, um, and yeah, but talented people, we have a huge problem by talented people leaving. So let's talk about what you're doing now. What are you doing now? Um, I uh, run my company, Hire Train VA. Very easy to remember. I chose a name that's so easy to remember. It's like, okay, what is what is it that we do? We hire and we train virtual assistants. That's it. So hiretrainva.com, um, and that's pretty much what we do. I believe that there's a lot of there are a lot of talented people in the world, um, a lot of good talent who is who will be so happy to uh, to work on the U.S. market. So our job is to impact the lives of entrepreneurs here and impact the lives of virtual assistants. And I think I'm in a, this unique position because I was a VA. Basically, I work remotely, right? Working from home. I understand, and not being not not being American, I understand the frustrations that virtual assistants might have, or not knowing uh, the cult, or, you know, the cultural differences, or, or what have you. But now being an entrepreneur, I also know what's keeping you up at night as an entrepreneur. So I think I, uh, I have a good understanding of both sides and my company is basically a bridge uh, making these good matches, helping companies grow while, while protecting their profit, making their, their dollars stretch further, but also um, helping virtual assistants uh, get a better life. We have had so many virtual assistants, even from my team, who were so happy that they were able to get an air conditioning because of the amount of, you know, the money they were, were they getting paid. It's like, I, I, got, I got an AC, I'm so happy. So you, you don't know how much you're impacting uh, their lives. So that's... So you have VAs that work for you and your company too? I do, yeah. We run fully on virtual assistants and uh, I have... Um, seven people right now all over the world they all work during u.s time zone never had any issues with that so a really really great team who right now they're handling everything january, january has been a very busy month for us february has been very busy it, my team can handle everything independently leaving me uh, more time to focus on bigger things and 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 being on a plane with you and filming this podcast you you wouldn't be possible otherwise that's right Okay, I have a question for you. You moved over here from Moldova, um, won the green card lottery. You started working for us as a company, making, I don't know, like $12, $15 an hour, something like that, or salary or something plus bonus. Yep. But not a lot of money, probably like 30 k or 35 k a year. Um, are you a millionaire now? I'm on my way. Okay, on your way. So do you track your net worth? Yes. Okay, are you comfortable sharing what it is today? Do you know what it is today? Um, the net worth, uh, it's, I mean, I know the company, what, I know we're, the, the percentage of gross margin, of the margin. Yeah, yeah. Have, a company, yeah. company yeah. makes money. I want to yeah. know about you. Like, oh, do you um, guys have a million dollar net worth? Oh, we don't and have if have not, what is it? Oh, what is our net worth? Oh, 350. 350? Yeah. Okay. That's 350. So, moved here. How much money did you have when you moved here? What was your net worth when you moved to the United States? $400 cash that we had in our pocket. $400 cash. Okay, $400 net worth. Moved here in 2018. Yes. And now you have a net worth of $350,000, and your goal is to get over a million by yes. when? So our goal for this year is to be at 600 k and so far we're on track. Uh, January has been on track. February so far has been on track. Hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll get there. So. Okay, and you're building a seven-figure business... Uh, for you, higher train VA, seven figures. Yes. Uh, obviously, probably Andre for his business has a different goal. Yes. Uh, what about personally? What like when do you want? Do you, is, what are your personal goals as far as financial net worth kind of stuff? So personal goals is we want um, the money to work for us. So when if we make capital, what do we do with this? So we want to invest in real estate, um, get some passive income. I think that would be really you know get get passive income, but also. Um, uh, 
personal a personal goal for us is to in start investing in real estate. Nice. Right. So, at what point? When did you start your business? How how long ago was it? About three years ago. Three years ago. Okay. So left Blackjack Real Estate in like 2021. Yes. Right yep, around yep. there. Yep. Three years ago. And then uh, probably, I mean, before that, you were probably making somewhere between like starting at like 35k, I would think. He was he was a little under 100k. Yes, the first. You mean when my, in my first year in business? No, no, your oh, first year working with us, oh, 2018. Yes, You're yes, making yes. like 30, yes. 35, about, something like that. Yes, I was about 35. Then you probably yeah. went up to like 50 or 60 yep. or something like that. Yep. And then you decided to leave the. So I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture for what it looks like to become an employee to a business owner, and how fast you can actually grow your net worth as a business owner. Because as an employee, you're probably taking a lot of that thirty-five thousand dollars and putting it towards expenses, living expenses, housing, all that stuff, food, um, and don't have a lot of excess. The whole goal in, in life when you make money is to create excess. Create excess and invest excess. And that, that, that's the goal. And so then the first year in business, you said you made like $100,000? You have something like that, yes, um, 100000 Then the second year was uh, two, 20 to 30 to 50 okay, yeah. And then uh, third year we're um, forty. Oh, yeah, three forty. Yeah, mm -hmm. three forty. Nice. And so Easy growth. Yeah. So at that point, now you've gone from a four hundred dollar net worth in twenty eighteen yes. to a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar net worth in twenty twenty four. And I would I would probably argue there might be some things that aren't in there. Maybe I don't know. Like uh, maybe your house. I don't know if you guys are putting your house at the value that you should. Things like yes. that. Maybe you are. Um, three fifty. And then going from there to a million. And I bet it goes from 350 to a million about 10 times as fast as it went from 400 to 350. And so another year or two, it'd be easy to kind of double and double and double that. So what would you say to someone who's out there who, because people might say, oh, like everybody's millionaires, all this stuff that, and I interview a lot of people that made millions and millions of dollars. But your our personal net worth is what's really important. We're building these businesses, and they're making money, but we got to be put, pulling money out and actually investing in it. What would you say to somebody, like, what is the, the best way and fastest way that they could to make money and kind of grow their net worth if that's their focus? And it should be. By the way, it should be your focus. To grow your net worth should be your focus. I know you want to build seven-figure businesses, eight-figure businesses, all that stuff. If you have small margin, not making very much money, it has, it, you, you're not going to buy a plane like this. You're not going to have house the house that you want. You're not going to have the vacations that you want. You're not going to have the disposable income to be able to do things. And you have to grow your personal net worth at the same time as your business. So what would you recommend somebody do who's maybe working a job like you were? They're making 35 to 50K a year. And they're here in the United States. And they're saying, man, what? how do I, how do, I do that? How do I go from $400 net worth to 350000 Big value solve problems, right? You, you all heard about this. And even if you're a W-2, even if you're still, I mean, live below your means, I'm sure everybody has heard that. But it's not about saving money. It's You always think about what else I can do to bring in more capital. Um, so even if you have a W-2 job, what else can you do to make to get more bonuses, to get more money coming in? Especially if you have a business, it's probably easier to scale and easier to grow. And what I learned was... Um, at the beginning, in the first year, we tried to be everything to everyone and solve all the problems. When we really started to focus, that's when we uh, started seeing more growth. And like what Alex Hormozzi says, do the boring job. You know, don't don't get distracted. Do the everything that do the boring job. And that's that's kind of what we're doing. Like it's routine, it's boring, but it pays the bills and it helps us grow. And then when you feel comfortable. No, delegating this to someone, then when you can free up your time, then you can think about the next step and, and, and what you can do about this. But it's, um, it, it, it is a game. It, it's, um, it's a fun game, but you still have to probably just... That's, that prob that's what, it, what we did. That's what we're focusing on now. We're still not at a million dollars uh, worth, but uh, I, think, like, I feel like we're on the way to get there. Especially because when I looked at new companies that are starting out, you know, they, they follow this J curve, which means when you start out, you initially have like you go in negative and then you have a big growth. That's the traditional way. We didn't do that. We, we were always positive, but, you know, we're still not where we want to be. But that, that's probably what I would say. So you said something, Val, you said um, add value and like go figure out a way to make, if you're a W-2 employee, figure out a way to make other money. 
Like, what would be some recommendations? Because I know you were doing that. You would come to me and be like, hey, I want to do some coaching or I want to do this. And like, okay, like I, if we do that and we sell that, then you can get paid more. So, I mean, that was you in a job as a W-2 employee looking for probably other ways to make more money. Yes. We're always trying to figure out how to make more money, I thought, which is good. because, And then you understood that if the company makes more money, you can make more money. It's not just like pay me more, pay me more, pay me more. But you bring ideas. So uh, what are some things that people could do that are in a W-2 job right now to make more money potentially? That's right. So when I was with your company, uh, I was very motivated by the bonuses. I was at $12 an hour when I started, and I, I figured that I would have to work 50 hours a week just to cover uh, rent, diapers for our daughter, and food. And for food, we had a $50 budget per week. I mean, it wasn't too much, right? So, um, but, so obviously, I wanted to get more bonuses, and that's what motivated me. And I, um, um, that's because you, you, you can, there's no cap on the bonuses you can get. And even now with the team that I have, I mean, the team, my team are my, like my employees, but I want to, I usually make it very clear. If the company wins, everybody wins. So I want to give bonuses based on performance. Uh, we have bonuses for, you know, if they stayed with us for a while, you know, like to, to uh, motivate them to, to, mo to foster their loyalty, but also bonuses based on performance. So if you are, um, and what you said is very important, like you don't go to, go to your company and say, pay me more money, pay me more money. If, like, I know some people said, I've been with your company for two years, it's time for me to get a raise. Well, are you bringing in more value than you did two years ago? Because I, be, I can't just give you a bonus or an increase in salary just because you stayed with me longer. What's, what do I get back, right? I mean, I know it's kind of rude to say, but that's, that's kind of the, the, the logic, the mentality. So think about you if you're an employee, what can you do to bring more value to the company and then you can, uh, how you can benefit from that. Also coach others, teach others. If you're successful in whatever you're doing, there are a lot of people who would like to be where you are right now. I feel like I have gotten good, good uh, success with, with lead intake and uh, you happen to have a lot of you know, people who were looking for this kind of help as well. So it was a perfect match. Um, so be, be very good at what you do and then this opens doors for you. You can't bring more value if you're average or if, you're, if you don't stand out. So uh, do more, do better, uh, improve your skills, learn a lot, and then you can coach others. Have a YouTube channel, talk about this. I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can monetize uh, your knowledge. Uh, some of them take a long time, and, uh, but uh, they're usually they're ones that are shorter, like coaching or, you know, um, a, write a book or whatever it is, but it, it, the fact that you're a W-2 doesn't mean that you're stuck. Uh, for sure. The only thing that I'll add is uh, start a side hustle, okay? You can start a side hustle too. If you are looking to make some extra income during your W-2, this is exactly what I did. I started a real estate side hustle. And so I was a full-time W-2 employee flying airplanes and helicopters for the Navy, and I started buying rentals, and I started flipping houses. Okay, I was flipping houses on the side. I made $45,000 a year. I did. I made like 43 k on my first deal, forty five thousand on the next one. That was half of my salary. I basically took that money and I could dump it into whatever I wanted. So if you could make an extra thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars doing something each year, maybe it's you know doing sales on the side. Maybe it's there's 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 websites that just do gigs. You could just do a gig, and it could be a reviewing something. It could be things after hours on your own time. You just got to be willing to put in some of the work and, and set aside okay, time to do that. Like, I had to work, you know, 10, 12 hours a day in my real job. And then nights, mornings, and weekends, I was doing my side hustle. And it was sacrificed for a few years, but it set me up for success long term. So that's something you can do. Obviously, like, don't do anything that you're not allowed to do with your W-2 job. Might get you fired, things like that. But, you know, I would go to, I would go to meetings, like real estate meetups. I was reading books. I was learning, educating myself. And then the best way to educate yourself is by doing something. So a side hustle is another great way. If there's no more earning capacity inside of your position, then the thing I would ask myself is, can I make more money somewhere else, you know, with another job? Can I build a side hustle, doing something? I mean, it it could be selling e-commerce. It could be, you know, uh, starting Amazon fulfillment business. It could be, uh, there's so many different, it could be like buying ATMs and setting them up and making money on ATM fees. There's so many ways. There's a million ways to make a million dollars. And so you can do it on the side. The whole goal, create excess. Don't, don't increase your spending with your earning. So what Val was saying is they, they lived off $50 a week for food. 
Like, are you living off fifty dollars a week for food right now? Like, you can't. I can't even go out to dinner with my family. Yes, I went out to dinner with my family last night. It was eighty dollars. You know, a tip, eighty bucks at a cheap Mexican restaurant that we go to all the time. Eighty bucks, and so I couldn't live off fifty dollars a week for my family right now. I mean, we could, but we don't. We don't have to because we have passive income, we have cash flow, we have business, we have that kind of stuff. But you might need to for a while. And I did for a while. Like, I saved 65% of my salary for years when I was young. And I put all that into investment, all of it. Can I just add something yeah, real quick? Because I think a lot of people, they overthink what it's like to start a side, a side hustle. And they put too much effort and too much energy into learning everything they can about that side hustle before jumping and before doing and uh, I'll, I'll tell you from my experience, when I started my business, I had a completely different view of what it would look like. But now as I'm doing it, as I'm putting in the reps, I have grown so much. It's taken me in a completely different direction, but it's in a much better direction. So you can never be overprepared. I mean, obviously, know what you're getting into, but you don't have to be an expert at that yet because it will change. Your marketing will change, your perspective will change, like just, just start, you know, and I think this is very important. Don't, don't overthink it, uh, just do it. And yeah, you'll make some mistakes, but um, you, I, I'm really appreciative and, uh, of what I learned from taking risks and just doing it.